Hello everyone, Jeremiah here. I um, haven't done one of these videos in a little while. Pretty excited to do this one again here with you guys tonight. I'm um, going to be talking about something that has been quite popular if you follow a lot of online speakers and teachers um, or if, if you go on YouTube at all and spend any time kind of looking into uh, what, what the hot topics, I guess, in Christianity are today. And one of those things I want to talk about tonight is uh, the perspective on the Asbury revival that's going on um, down in the States. I have been hearing so many different perspectives on this. I have personally been asked uh, more and more lately um, what my thoughts were on it. And uh, I wanted to give some perspective on it that I hadn't necessarily heard yet, but I think is important to remember when we're talking about revival in general. And uh, one of the things that I, I find I find myself having a hard time with is uh, is the idea of judging something long before you have seen it or have a really good knowledge of what it is that you're talking about. So I'm going to give a bit of a disclaimer here. Um, I haven't been there. I haven't spent a lot of time in it. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is doing kind of an overview of what I've heard is going on there and, and kind of my idea of what revival has to do with it and uh, and kind of just give you some thoughts on what I'm seeing happening there what I'm hearing happening there and obviously if what I'm going off of is wrong then um, my opinion of it would have would obviously change but in this case the people that I'm going to be talking about, I'm not going to give them by name um, but the people that I have listened to have personally attended and uh, part of this review is going to be based on how they experienced it and what they saw. So I think yeah, we can get jumped in. I'm hoping this won't be too long of a video, just simply because there's not a whole lot to talk about on the topic of revival, uh, especially in this one, but I hope that this video helps you kind of make sense of it. So let's get jumping into it right away. One of the things that I think is important to remember when we talk about the word revival is that uh, we don't see it anywhere in scripture. It's it's not a New Testament word. It's not an Old Testament word. It is a word, uh, it's more of a Christian buzzword, so to speak, that we've kind of just created out of nowhere um, to, to identify with a particular feeling or a particular genre of, of time or a specific kind of ministry. Or The problem is everybody has their own definition for it. And so this is where we're talking about, if we're talking about Asbury in particular, this is one of the things that makes calling it a revival or not a revival a problem. So I've heard two major different perspectives on it. One of them is that this is called something called emotionalism, which is just uh, in, in basic terms, these are all the people seeking the feelies and there's not actually anything of value or substance in it. I've heard that side of the story and I've also heard that uh, um, on the other end, like this is an amazing, incredible move of God. All of the, all of these crazy things are happening, and uh, and this is the beginning of something absolutely huge and and out, out, outstanding. And it's going to be like this fire that goes across everywhere. And apparently, uh, this is such a unique thing that's happening and outspreading. And and I've heard both ends of the spectrum. And, uh, and then you've got people fighting about, well, this is revival, or no, that's not revival, or this is revival, no, that's revival. So. Uh, what I want to start with before we look at what's happening in Asbury is the definition of revival. Because right now, the way it stands, there isn't a Christian authority on the word revival because it's not found in Scripture. It's not defined in Scripture by a, a word that we can find. It's not defined in Scripture in terms of, of, of context with that word. So obviously, if the word is not there, you can't find context around it. It's not like the word love that's found... Uh, however many times throughout the New Testament, and then around that word you find the context associated with that word, and therefore there can at least be some debate and some discussion on what the what the word means in each particular context, and then how you look at it and how you break it down. So the word revival isn't found in Scripture whatsoever. So as far as that goes, to have Christians, Christian leaders, Christian... Um, Whatever Christians in general, if you're going to plant your flag and say, you know what, I'm going to die on this hill saying this is revival, this is not revival, well, you can't do that. And here's the reason why. Because you're not an authority on revival and you can't be because it's not found in scripture. 
Revival has an actual definition, and I'm going to read it to you guys. I'll actually pull up on my screen from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. But if we aren't going to have a, f a firm uh, finding of the word in Scripture, then you can't speak... Uh, speak to the word from a position of authority as far as God's word is concerned, which means that the word revival is going to become very subjective. Okay, And th when I say subjective, it means it's going to be subject to your own perspective. Now, the problem with this <laughs> is that uh, there's a good thing and a bad thing to this. All right, So uh, the subjective view of the word revival is subjective because um, you don't find it in scripture. So you may have somebody saying, well, this isn't revival. Uh, because of XYZ, you might have somebody saying this is revival because of XYZ, and here's the thing. They can both be right in this particular case because each one of them is taking their own subjective view of revival. I personally have my own subjective view of revival. Um, I, th I have an idea of that I that I would stand by. I think that I would call it revival, but the reality of it is, is I'm not right, you're not right, they're not right. As long as you have a word that's subjective, you, you can't find a final authority on that particular word. And so... To say that what's happening in Asbury is a revival or is not a revival is going to be completely based on your definition of the word revival, right? So one of the things I've seen lots is leaders will come out and say, well, here's my definition of revival. And as my definition of revival, this is what we should be looking for. And then I hear other people saying, well, no, no, this is the definition of revival. And because this is the definition of revival, what's happening there isn't real. It's just emotionalism. And so you get into this big debate. And realistically, the, the word that everybody's getting tripped, on, tripped up on here is the word revival. And so we're going to take a look at that word. Uh, I'm just going to pull it up here. So if you look on your screen, it says an act or instance of reviving the state of being revived, such as renewed attention to or interest in something, a new presentation or publication of something old, a period of renewed religious interest. Now, this is where it's going to kind of get tied into what a lot of Christians want to talk about. And an often highly emotional evangelistic or evangelistic meeting or series of meetings. Okay, so these are the two that are going to be most commonly talked about when we're talking about Asbury. And this is an official uh, definition of the word that we could take from the English language. Now, that being said, it's important to remember that these are very, very vague descriptions, okay? Um, when it comes to Christianity, there's a lot of nuance, there's a lot of depth, and there's a lot of, of, of intimacy or intimate ideas and, and ways that the Christian work. Um, there's a lot of different, uh, <laughs> how, do, how do I say this? What a Christian, what a service with a bunch of Christians looks like is, is going to vary depending on the, on the spirituality of the leader. It's going to vary depending on the maturity of the doctrine. It's going to vary depending on, not the maturity of the doctrine, the maturity of the one teaching the doctrine. Um, it's it's going to vary on a whole bunch of different things. It's also going to vary on the comfort zone level of what people are going through. Sorry, I'm just going to mute this real quick. Because I'm doing a video for y'all. We were going to do a live, but for some reason, um, we we're having some internet problems tonight. So we're just going to do a video and upload it straight up. So with that in mind, uh, what a Christian service looks like and what revival looks like is going to vary on so many different things. And so to say it's revival or it's not revival, again, just to reiterate it all, is going to be dependent on your point of view and your definition of the word revival. So, if I'll pull it back up one more time. If you're going to go based on this, it's a period of renewed religious interest. So, that could be uh, anything from somebody walked away from God temporarily and all of a sudden was like, hey, you know what? Found God again. Cool. Um, another one is an often highly emotional evangel evangelistic meeting or series of meetings. And uh, I do think that these two were added on later mostly because of culture. <laughs> I think it was I think it's one of those words that we, we kind of added in. And again, even a highly emotional evangel evangelistic meeting, evangelistic, I'm having trouble with that word today, meeting or series of meetings is an ambiguous statement in and of itself. That could be somebody who had been addicted to drugs and alcohol shows up to a meeting or, or a church service, uh, finds out what God thinks of them, and then all of a sudden decides in the end, you know what, I want to serve God, I want to, I want to do what he says to do, and uh, there's going to be a lot of emotions running with these, right? Um, you're, you you may find it where 
you are praying in the spirit and all of a sudden uh, you feel the anointing of God and, and, and that produces emotions on the inside of you. Some might call that revival. So you can see how this becomes extremely ambiguous with the word revival and this is where a lot of the problem comes in. So that being said, um, with the word revival here, I'm going to give you guys kind of my perspective on the word revival and uh, I, I tend to sit more on the idea of revival is something that was dead, is now alive, or something was alive, died, and is now alive again. Um, if, if we're going to take it at what the word originally meant, um, that is definitely what it meant. As far as... Yeah, so revival was something that was dead, brought back to life. So it was, or it was alive, then dead, then brought back to life. As Christians, we don't even go through this, right? So as Christians, we're just dead. There's, there's no alive period. You're born in sin. And then when you become a new creature in Christ, you all of a sudden are revived. You, you get this new creature on the inside of you, the Bible says, or you are a new creature, um, and you've been born again. And so born again is essentially, you were dead, now you're alive. Okay. Now, you, you may differ on this opinion if you want to stand and say, well, that means revival. It means you were alive, then dead, then alive again, then go for it. doesn't matter to me. Um, but based on that description, revival means something very different than to, to each and every person. So now that that's been said, I want to have a look at, uh, I want to, or not have a look, I want to talk about one of the things that I have, some of the things that I have seen and heard happening at this Asbury gathering. Um, and I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, one of the ones is prayer, okay? So prayer, this is, this was started with a bunch of people who decided to get together and start praying, and, and out of that there was this desire to continue praying. And uh, and and it's grown and it's and it's it's gained some uh, some traction. It's gained some social media attention. It's uh, it's become something that major news articles are talking about. But uh, one of the things I really loved is the first thing that uh, that started it. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is off of a source that I do trust. Um, is that it started with a group of young people not only praying, but they started with repentance. Okay, and so repentance is is one of the foundational requirements of being saved. Okay, so foundation, uh, uh, we're saved by grace through faith. One of the ways that you get that is through repentance. If you're not repentant, um, then you, that grace just simply isn't for you. Um, repentance is, is, is a huge aspect of our Christian walks. It's required of us. It, it's a re And if you don't know what repentance is, repentance is essentially, you know what, I know I'm a sinner, I'm sinning in these areas, and I'm going to stop sinning, and I'm going to move towards what God wants me to do. And uh, so that's essentially what repentance is. It's, it's going one way, which is towards death, hell, and, and the grave, and destruction, because the wages of sin are death, and it's going the other way towards um, what God is requiring of us, so uh, obedience to him, walking in holiness, righteousness, all those beautiful things. So with that being said, it started with repentance, and then it continued in in prayer and, and worship, and uh, one of the people that I do trust, again, not going to give any names, did attend this meeting, showed up, and this is what she said. She said it was a, a regular church service. Um, the presence of God was there. People were were, were were laying hands on each other. They were praying for each other. Um, there, was, there was obviously a, a peace and a presence there. And uh, she said it, it didn't look any different than a normal church service. And one of the things I really appreciated about this is, uh, is one, w w when we talk about what Christians are supposed to do, like we look at repentance, we look at prayer, we look at prophecy, we look at laying hands on the sick. Um, mind you, I didn't hear any of that happening, but uh, at least not from this person. Um, but I imagine there was a lot of a lot of prayer and a lot of stuff happening. And I, I mean, all of these things are good Christian things to do. Like the Bible talks about doing these things. And, and we are, for some reason, looking at this as this huge explosion of revival. We're looking at this weird extra Christian event. We're looking at it as something that is not normal in the church. We're looking at it as something that, wow, everybody should want this. Everybody should have this. Da, da, da. And and I guess for me, one of the things that breaks my heart is this should be a regular occurring thing in church. This isn't, this isn't an extra 
extra spiritual event. This was a this was an event where a bunch of young people came together, they repented, they prayed together, and they had this desire to keep praying together. Now, it's not one person that's continuously praying 24 hours. It's groups of people coming in and they're keeping their focus on God and they're and they're actually just living life the way the Bible says. It says pray without ceasing. Okay? Now, obviously, this is impossible to do as one person. You, you can't live your entire life and, and pray without ceasing. I mean, you sleep, you eat, you, com you communicate with people. E even when, like for, for preachers, when you're preaching, you're not praying, you're preaching, you're, you're teaching, you're, you're doing something for the edification of the saints, not necessarily your communication with God. And so there's always going to be this requirement that, or there's this idea that this is an impossible task to achieve, which is continuous prayer. But the reason it's given is because it's given to the body of Christ. And so as a whole, we're never, we're never supposed to stop praying. And one of the things I love about this, about this group is that they're just being regular Christians. Um, and so if we're talking about revival as this, this crazy, uh, if I go back to the definition that we had here, uh, let's bring it up here for you guys. A period of renewed religious religious interest. So, if you if you're going to go off of this particular definition, I think yeah, you could call this revival. The the thing that saddens me a little bit is is if repentance, prayer, worship, getting to know God, spending time praying for each other, having the Word present, doing all of these things, it is a new or renewed interest amongst Christians. I think the church is in worse condition than we thought. Because these are regular expectations of the church. As a matter of fact, if your church isn't doing things like prayer and uh, and and worship and having people that are are hungry and repentant, I mean, repentance is huge. If you aren't seeing regular repentance in your church, if you're not seeing these things, it's no wonder that what's happening in Asbury just seems so supernatural. Because God responds to repentance. Um, and so if, if you're in a church and you're finding that these things aren't there, you, you might be in a church that's experiencing some real deadness, um, because what's happening in Asbury is just regular church behavior. We, my wife and I have this, um, this perspective when we have our kids, right? So, uh, and, and we do this, we don't have kids yet, but we do this with our nephews and we do this with, uh, I did this in youth. One of the things that was very important is we don't celebrate expected behavior, right? Like, if one of your kids do, gets up and does the dishes, it's you don't make this big deal about them doing the dishes. That's expected behavior. You live in the home. There's this expectation you're going to do things a certain way. One of the things that you do celebrate is unexpected over and above good behavior, right? So, um, for example, if you're teaching your kids good character and all of a sudden they go to school and they exemplify that good character in a way that shows off who they are in Christ and, and not just... Not just uh, not just the basic, not just the basic tenets of Christianity. Like I'm, at, they're adhering to what they say. But let's say, for example, somebody got hurt and they go out of their way, and, and maybe they've got ten dollars on them, and they go and buy them a snack or something. They go out of their way to, to be generous, to be compassionate, and to do some things that are not necessarily 100% expected of Christianity or Christians. I mean, those are the kinds of things you reward. You reward extra, extra work, extra things, and 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 when it comes to you know churches. Uh, and, and and religious leaders and people who attend churches, it's important to remember that the Bible does give some foundations as to how we're supposed to act when we gather. One of those things is repentance. Another one of those things is prayer. Another one of those things is prophecy. Another one of those things is praying in tongues. All of these things are kind of playing into uh, an, uh, the, another really, really big one is preaching of the word, right? Like that's one of the biggest reasons we gather is because the word on the inside of us produces the fruit of the word outside of us. And so... When all of these things happen, this is just normal Christianity. And so, from what I've seen with the Asbury Revival, from what I've seen, or that's what they're calling it anyway, all I'm seeing is, wow, look at these people just serving God. You know what? And and whether or not it's heartfelt, whether or not it's fake, whether or not it's real, you really can't make that judgment call from your computer screen. Uh, you can't make that call from behind your keyboard, and you can't make that call based on secondhand smoke. What you really need to do is, if you're really curious about it, go down there and visit with some of the people who have, or who are participating in, who are actively praying, and who are actively part of that community. And m my recommendation is, is if you are going to go down there, I wouldn't go down there looking for trouble. I'd go down there looking for what's what's the truth, what's really happening. If you're super curious about it, but what you're more likely to find is just a bunch of people being Christians. <laughs>
You're, you're more likely to just find a standard, normal Christian walk in a bunch of people. For some reason, this is so unexpected. It's so new. And it shouldn't be, guys. This is normal behavior. This is what we're supposed to do as Christians. This is how we're supposed to walk as Christians. This is how we're supposed to live our lives as Christians. We're supposed to be able to experience the presence of God every single Sunday. You should you should be walking into your church service excited to go to, to, to church because you're going to learn something new about the about God uh, through the Word. You're going to be you're going to have an opportunity uh, potentially to hear a prophetic word, and if you don't, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't have to happen every Sunday, but there, there has to be that, that openness and, and that part there, because that is still part of the, of the church that we're supposed to have. Um, good word, good teaching, good worship. I, I mean, the, here's the thing, guys. They're not being blown out of the water because of their incredible worship. They're, they're doing it because of this heart of intimacy. And I think this actually leads into another really big problem is today we've, we've come to idolize worship pastors. I mean, how many people pick churches because of a worship team rather than the word being taught? And like, just being real with you for a moment, if you're picking a church based on how good you feel in worship and, and not based on how much you're growing from the word, you have your priorities messed up. You, you need to, you need to get that back in order because worship, worship leaders and worship teams are great. They're excellent. They're, uh, they're, they can be a lot of fun. They can be motivating. They can be emotionally moving. But they are, without the word, completely irrelevant. You can worship with God in your own home. You can have songs and spiritual songs coming out of you at any point. You can do all of these things. They are not a necessity in a church, and therefore they should not be the highest priority in a church. And that's one of the things I love about about what's happening in Asbury is the priorities are in line. It's not about a big fancy worship set. It's just a bunch of people coming together and keeping God first. It's prayer, it's repentance, it's holiness, it's who God's calling them to be, and there's this drawing in. And I think what you're seeing is just authentic real christianity and some of you might be saying well jeremiah we don't know that because we can't judge the long-term fruit we can't see all these things well what i can tell you is from what i've seen um from the little bit i did see in a live video and the people who have gone i mean it's from what you can see from there it looks it looks like people are just hungry and that's all it is it, it's not this uh it's not this super spiritual thing it's not uh it's not <laughs> the parting of the Red Sea. It's it's just people being hungry. It's just people being Christian, and that's the basics of it. So hopefully this helped. Um, I, I want to end with with this last thought. Do not be a revival seeker. Okay, um, it's a it's a popular trend to get on. It's a very trendy thing as Christians to want to be like, ooh, I'm a revival seeker. Look at me going to this revival church. No, no, no. What you want to be doing is having a, a Christian lifestyle that lines up with the Bible. Um, and if you do, you're going to be experiencing everything that they're experiencing down there in Asbury because that's just a that's just a regular church service. That's just regular Christians doing regular Christian things. Um, if you don't believe me, go and look at the life of Jesus. He did all of these things. He prayed continuously. He was constantly listening to the Father. He was constantly teaching. He was constantly um, being with his disciples. He was constantly uh, bringing and putting himself down and elevating the will of the Father above his own. When he taught taught us to pray. He said, he said, our father who art in heaven, he's putting the priority on God. He even said just before he went to the cross, he was talking to God and he said, God, not my will, but your will be done. Even though, even though in that moment he really didn't want to emotionally, he did not want to go to the cross, but he knew he had to. And so he laid his own wills down and he said, not my will, but your will be done. And so in that moment, we, we see, we see that heart. We see the heart of God in, in that. And the reality of it is, is that's what you're seeing in Asbury. So the idea of revival, not worth fighting over because it's a subjective word. It's a subjective word not found in scripture. And so for people to say it's not of God or it is of God, if you haven't been there, you should just stop talking about it. Um, or, or sorry, you can talk about it, but stop saying it is or isn't this amazing, fabulous thing. It's just Christians being Christians. Um, and and it's a beautiful picture, and God celebrates it. And as brothers and sisters, you should celebrate it. And uh, yeah, other than that, I encourage you to do what they're doing. Repent, pray, worship, seek God daily, 
make him the highest priority in your life. I mean, Jesus said, if you don't take up your own cross and follow me daily, you're not one of my followers. And so make this a regular part of who you are. And, and you will find that what's happening in Asbury is just a regular occurrence in your everyday life. I hope this helped you. I hope this perspective kind of brought a different case. If you do have any questions about this, I'm more than happy to answer them. Please leave a comment or you can send us a message. You can find us at Revelation Church in Medicine Hat. You can find us on our website. You can find us on our Facebook page. And my name is Jeremiah Benoit. Again, if you have any questions, please just reach out to us. We're happy to have that discussion with you. And uh, yeah, and if you don't agree with what I said, I'm, I'm totally good with that. If you want to have the discussion about that, please feel free to put it down uh, in the comment section or you can reach out to me and I'm more than happy to have that conversation with you as well. I hope you guys are blessed and highly flavored. Have a great day.